Welcome to the City Manager's Report. The City Manager's Report, a look at city updates and municipal news. Your hosts, Emily Springstro of Oshkosh Media and City Manager Mark Roloff. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us on this very special edition of City Manager's Report, the Top 10 of 2016 episode. I'm your host Emily Springstro and I am joined by your Oshkosh City Manager, Mark Roloff. Welcome Mark. Great to be here Emily. For the very special episode, Mark, on a typical episode of CMR we cover the most current things going on in Oshkosh, preview the City Council meeting agenda, uh, but on this particular episode we like to take a look back and see what an, a, a great successful year it's been with an annual top 10 episode. So it's kind of a year of review for us today. A lot of fun to take a look at some things we're really proud of and a little look at what we're looking at for the future. Yes, so it's well, we're gonna take a look, count down from the top 10 down to number one thing. Um, and without further ado, let's, let's go ahead and get started. We got a lot of awesome things to talk about today, Mark. So starting out with number 10 on our top 10 list is the Oshkosh Public Museum. And they tend to be kind of a regular occurrence on our top 10. The Oshkosh Museum has been doing some really great improvements. Uh, the the Museum board has been working very closely with Brad Larson, our museum director, and uh, there are a couple things that have gotten started. And uh, the first one is the most visible one from the outside, and that's the new archway that's right at the corner of Algoma and Congress Avenue. It's, it's really to welcome people and really to be a nice offset with the Paint Art Center, our neighbor Kitty Wampus from the museum there. But uh, and this was even still part of the work in progress, but you can see just how beautiful it is. And this is to get people to be feel welcome. And mm -hmm. the whole logo is the, for the benefit of the public when the Sawyer family donated the museum uh, many years ago, over 90 years ago now. Uh, the Public Museum is replacing the old uh, waterways exhibit with People of the Waters and this is the new exhibit and uh, some renderings of what it's going to look like because right now doesn't look like much. It's a construction it's a, zone. It's a construction zone inside. right now. Inside. So yes. uh, it's a lot of fun to, to talk about what the possibilities are. It'll be a great place for students to go. I know the target is fourth graders to tell them about the history of Wisconsin and the people who made Wisconsin great, beginning with the Native Americans and, and moving through history uh, with everything that we're proud of in Oshkosh. So we're real excited that People of the Waters is uh, going to uh, be kicking up some dust in 2017 and uh, moving towards completion. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're really looking forward to this exhibit. It's so fun to look at the renderings and I cannot wait to get in there and get a tour of the uh, final exhibit. So moving on to number nine, Mark, of our top 10 here today, we have Go H&I Strengthens Neighborhoods, the Greater Oshkosh Healthy Neighborhoods Incorporated, and they are, they've been busy in 2016. They've done a lot. First thing, they've done a lot of fundraising, getting community partners together, and it's not just the city. Um, we've got some private uh, donations, including a nice donation from Verve uh, Credit Union, three local foundations, including the Oshkosh Area Community Foundation, and of course, private donors. Over $250,000 is being invested in our neighborhoods as a result of this program. And all the video you're seeing is not just from, from one place. We have 13 neighborhood associations, and they put on events throughout the year. Uh, these are just some of the fun summer ones. These weren't last week, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but the whole idea is their community building and engagement program. They provide uh, support and technical assistance to our 13 neighborhood associations. They've held 16 building, community building events just in the past year alone, a couple holiday decorating contests, <laughs> and get this, 4,000 hours, uh, volunteer hours, on behalf of Oshkosh Neighborhoods. It's just incredible. It's amazing. And so you, you can just see all the different projects. We, I think some of those shots were from Neighborhood Night Out. We have a groundbreaking. They, there are so many projects that they're working on, and you can really tell that our neighborhoods are getting behind their, where they live, their place of choice. And, and you know, it, they, each of the neighborhoods vary a little bit. The one here you see is the Waters Plaza near the, the um, library. But mm -hmm. we've also, uh, with, through Go H&I, they've acquired their first project property uh, in the Menominee South Park neighborhood. And uh, through this real estate development program, they're going to redevelop a single family home inside and out and sold to an owner occupant uh, who's of lesser means that they would never be able to own, own a home if it wasn't for this program. So mm -hmm. that's going to be completed in spring of 2017. The neighborhoods are so engaged. We're so happy to have that. And that's really what I believe is going to be the future of 
community engagement is using yes. the neighborhoods to help us help them improve their neighborhood and our city in general. Yes, yeah, so it's so exciting. This is not the last you're going to hear about those neighborhoods. I've got lots of updates coming up in 2017 as well. So moving on to number eight of the top 10 of 2016 mark is Just Fix It Wisconsin encourages solution to infrastructure problems. And this is kind of a conversation that's really gained a lot of momentum. This is more than just a discussion in the city of Oshkosh, although the city of Oshkosh is very engaged in, and I'm very supportive of it. This is work that we began with the League of Wisconsin Municipalities. Uh, the Transportation Development Association is a group of all different uh, folks who care about transportation, but it's, it's really saying we really need to address our infrastructure problems. In September, we had a statewide group meeting in every county in the state, and this uh, is from the Winnebago County uh, presentation. A lot of community leaders, including our own public works director, James Robbie, talked about how important it is to have sustainable transportation funding. And we also had some businesses that were in the audience that night that, that I recognized and said, these folks need uh, good infrastructure to move their products to, from from their business to the marketplace and to get their supplies and that's part of what Just Fix It is. It's fixing it for our individual personal transportation needs but also for commerce uh, and just the overall economy. So uh, we're real happy to be uh, talking about this program and get people more aware of how important it is to invest in our transportation infrastructure. Well, now we need to kick it up to the state to let them know that this is important, not just to cities, but our residents and our businesses. Yes, it's great to see so many uh, cities and everyone getting behind this you know, solution that we want to get better infrastructure. So it's great to see that wonderful item. Moving on to number seven, Mark, in top 10 of 2016, our new police chief is completing his first year. He will be in January, but he's, he's closing out 2016 strong. He started and is finishing 2016 very strong. Mm -hmm. uh, Dean Smith was uh, selected through a very uh, engaging community process. Um, he made it through all that. And then he started a little bit after the first of the year. And I think he's uh, done a great job in taking over for Chief Groyle, who retired, mm -hmm. and carrying on a lot of the things, as well as starting some new initiatives that were started with Chief Groyle. And uh, one of them was the, the body camera program, with uh, which Chief Smith had some prior experience on. Mm -hmm. So it made our implementation so much easier. And he has continued the, uh, the tradition of community policing and engaged our officers even more if, if you can even imagine that. But being out in the community and then uh, in the aftermath of the tragedy in Dallas where some police officers were shot, we, uh, Chief organized in two hours yeah. a community walk to say, look, we need to work together uh, to solve community problems. Mm -hmm. and, and we were going to just engage the community and these are just examples of, of things that the Chief's done in his first year. A lot of different events, the Police the, uh, Memorial uh, mm -hmm. Day uh, recognition, uh, and just getting our CCOV, our Community uh, Command and Outreach Vehicle out there, just to let the people know that we are out there to help uh, and uh, make our community better and safe, and really appreciate Chief Smith's uh, contributions and in, in moving that progress. Yes, he's getting out there. People are starting to recognize him. And it was just overall a great year for the police department, don't you think? Oh, very much so. And you're going to mm -hmm. see a lot more as time goes on. Definitely. I know. I think we say that for every one of these because there's so many awesome things. So, Mark, we're moving on to number six of the top ten, and that is discussion on diversity inspires change. This was a big topic in 2016 uh, with the discussion of the diversity coordinator and diversity in general in Oshkosh. It's been discussed, I think, nationwide, and the council had uh, asked me, uh, to set a goal for 2016 to have a discussion about the possible creation of diversity coordinator but we went beyond that because it wasn't just about a position it was about uh, the issue and how important it was and I had a lot of conversations some council members uh, assisted me in those conversations I met with stakeholders interested in diversity and people who really uh, had some insight into the diversity issue talked to a lot of folks at the university but also I talked to a lot of businesses and diversity is much more than what I think a lot of people initially perceived as a racial mm -hmm. issue. It's all these issues, and I've, I found this, uh, this iceberg that I showed council, and it, diversity is a lot more than just that, and it's being open to a lot of different things, physical abilities, uh, socioeconomic status, sexual orientation, ethnicity. Uh, skin color was just one, but it's mm -hmm. one of so many different issues. Um, it really opened people's eyes. Um, and our citizens spoke in on this. 
Uh, we had a citizen survey done that said uh, they felt that we could do more to be uh, more welcoming uh, to the diverse community. Business leaders told me that in order for them to attract a workforce for the 21st century, uh, their workforce demands that we're very more welcoming and diverse. So all those issues say there's really also an economic imperative to this in addition to the moral imperative that you've heard a lot about. But there's a lot of reasons that we should take uh, more attention to this issue. And the discussion's not over. You had talked about possibly starting a commission to, to continue the conversation. The council's asked us to, uh, to reinvigorate what was called the Human Relations Committee. Um, we got a lot of issues that we got to get um, our uh, boards and commissions kind of uh, cleaned up and maybe streamlined a little bit. And uh, you're going to see the diversity issue come to the forefront uh, as we start creating uh, and, and reviewing these boards and commissions. Wonderful. Well, Mark, we have breezed through the, the first five items in our top ten, so now we're moving on to the top five. Oh, yeah, let's go. Number five in our top ten of 2016 is the rental inspection program has begun, and this has been a very hot topic in 2016, uh, both positive and negative feedback on that. Give us a little bit of an overview of what, what it is. It's absolutely been a controversial program. It's, a, it's addressing a very uh, important issue in the city, and that's the health and safety of our rental housing units. And uh, that's these are the, the main points. It's about health and safety. It's about improving property values because there are single family property owners that have invested a lot of money in their properties and we want to make sure that their property values are preserved. And it's being done through the registration of uh, landlords so that we have contact information. There are people who have problems with their properties in the middle of the night and don't even know who to call. Mm -hmm. um, Similarly, if we have an issue, we want to be able to contact those folks. Perhaps we notice something that might cost them money if it's not addressed. Uh, and of course, the program is going to involve inspections, and I know that's been a little bit of a controversial issue, and of course fees, but you have to think about it. It's important that we charge fees so that the taxpayers don't have to pay for that service. No different than you get inspections at restaurants and things. Exactly. And just some of the examples are things that are basic health and safety, smoke detectors, uh, uh, deadbolt locks, water heaters, uh, electrical, plumbing, just real basic things that we know of impact, uh, number one, the value of the property, but also the safety of the residents. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of students that don't necessarily understand all the rules and regs. Their moms and dads have been taking care of that issue for them. They've never had to even think about it. Mm -hmm. uh, but we want to make sure that we can look their parents in the eye and say, this is a safe and healthy place for your your adult child to live and we also have to think about that issue with uh, children of renters that uh, are the, the most vulnerable of all and we've had a lot of discussions about what we can do there so I know that that's uh, controversial and some people don't want to pay the fee but it's important for our health and safety and that's why I believe the council directed us to proceed with this program. Definitely. The main point being that you're protecting safe living conditions for our renters, which you had already stated here. Um, so the, the letter went out to the landlords to register, and then after the first of the month, I believe, uh, we're going to start encouraging renters to schedule uh, an inspection. So Right. Once we get everybody registered, then we can start making the contacts and scheduling appointments. That was the other thing that we were going to be showing up unannounced and without permission. It's all going to be about getting uh, tenants to s work with us to schedule an inspection and those are the inspections we're going to do. Wonderful. So like this, uh, like the other items on our top 10, you will be hearing more about this in 2017. Number four on our list, Mark, is one of my favorites. It's the Boatworks portion of the Riverwalk opening. And this was a really cool thing and a very positive event that we had back in June for the official opening, but it's a great chunk of the Riverwalk. It's a, it's a very visible part of the Riverwalk because there's so much in the Riverwalk that's available, but we were able to get an extra grant that enabled us to put not just that bridge that's along the river, but also a, uh, a picnic shelter, restroom. It really becomes a focal point for the whole Riverwalk system because this was one where you can park right next to the Riverwalk. And, you know, and if you want to have a picnic lunch before or after you go, or if you are interested in not biking along the Riverwalk, but you want to uh, take a kayak and, and launch it, 
that kayak launch is just phenomenal. It's so cool. Mm -hmm. It's so easy. I was like, oh, I, you know, it's always awkward when you're getting in a kayak and going out on the river. This makes it so easy and mm -hmm. handicap uh, accessible. Oh yes, mm -hmm. it's handicap accessible and and dummy accessible for guys like me. <laughs> but it really is. It's so easy to get on, uh, get on the river and actually get out of the river. It just takes a little bit of uh, hand motion, grabbing onto the rails and getting in and out. But we had a great a grand opening to show off the new shelter, the restrooms. Uh, we did get a significant grant from the Department of Natural Resources, not just for this section of the Riverwalk, but also for the, uh, the shelter itself. Mm -hmm. And so this is going to be when the Riverwalk really gets completed through the Boatworks area. You're going to see this as being a huge focal point, and I think it's going to add value to the neighborhood. Yes, and uh, what you said before really kind of was a great point. It's a great place to start or end your trip, um, or if you're interested in just you know taking advantage of the river, it's a it's a wonderful place to access that. So I got to ask, future plans for the Riverwalk? What's next in 2017? Well, this literally is a bridge to nowhere at this point. So the <laughs> the next phase is to connect the uh, the eastern end of the bridge with the next phase of the Riverwalk to get over into the Morgan District property. We've just been awarded another $700,000 grant from the DNR and that'll keep us busy into 2017 and perhaps even into 2018 a little bit. The idea will be that we'll be getting most of the Riverwalk west of Oregon Street done in the next two years and that's our goal. We're going to get as much as we can and what little bits left then we'll finish up uh, in subsequent years. And then we'll continue to move um, to move east of Oregon. Uh, we've already got some of that done all the way up to the Boatworks or the uh, the Dockside Restaurant, and then just continue and. Uh, see where it goes from there. Well, it's so exciting. And we were saying in our prep session, it's like the river walks always on the top 10 episode because every year there's something cool that's happening over there. So. And, and we're getting closer and closer to the vision that we created many years ago about having an accessible river walk for the public to enjoy. And, and that's really the best part. Yes, it is. We love our river walk. So Mark, we're moving into the top three of 2016. Number three is uh, kind of a broader topic. It's investments have been made in infrastructure. And this is a lot of different projects. A lot of different projects and this is continuing the emphasis that we have in the city strategic plan to invest in infrastructure so a lot of projects happening uh, the big one the most visible one for most people I think was um, the Main Street reconstruction that went all the way from New York Avenue all the way up to Murdoch uh, we did get some federal money associated with that every few years we can apply some federal monies to a street project and this one because we wanted to put in uh, bike lanes and uh, and make it more pedestrian friendly and bicycle friendly uh, that's where we used uh, the federal money towards that the neighbors were super mm -hmm. helpful in essentially giving up parking on street to make the uh, bike lanes possible that was something they felt was important to them and I think that's going to help connect people on the north side and along the Murdoch Street corridor with our downtown mm -hmm. and then uh, council also approved Irving Avenue bike lane uh, earlier this summer as well and it's going to connect it all together so that's that's a wonderful project mm -hmm. uh, additionally uh, CP Avenue uh, east of where like where the fire station is east of the Broad Street tracks it was in horrible condition we got that taken care of some wonderful nostalgic 1880 sewer has been eliminated we're happy to do that, that. <laughs> it's amazing uh, but we've also done some other ones to upgrade mm -hmm. things uh, along Snell Road a lot of digging up there we relocated an interceptor uh, sewer and a, um, uh, a lift station to take some of the, the sewage that goes from the prison and take it west before we take it south. Mm -hmm. That's actually freeing up some areas uh, along the Jackson Street corridor to develop because right now we couldn't develop it because we were at capacity. Now we, we've gotten ourselves a little more capacity there. Yes. And then um, a few more stormwater projects throughout the city. North Side industrial area over by um, Bemis Healthcare Packaging with the TIF district that was approved. That included some stormwater improvements to help make that street or, and those streets a little more passable. There was a lot of bad flooding in previous years. It's going to take care of that and it's going to enable all those businesses to expand without having to worry about stormwater detention because we're taking care of it for them. So wow. a lot of orange <laughs> barrels throughout the summer. A I lot. know they can be an inconvenience. Uh, but in the end, it's all well and good. And then yes. 
the biggest project that we uh, are working on Another now. Another very visual one. Very visual one, and you're going to see in 2017, mm -hmm. is our, our new water tower. This is our 1930s era water tower, over 75 years old, and that's pretty much the useful life of a water tower. We were going to have to repaint it inside and outside. Uh, we're replacing it, and uh, we really need this for fire flow in the downtown area. Mm -hmm. So we... Um, uh, we have this water tower. You'll see it start to go up the skyline over the course of this year. This water tower will remain in place until uh, until the new water tower is online. That'll probably be into 2018, but that'll be a work in progress. It is, and we're excited to see the work start on the water tower. At least I am. It's, it's going to be a really cool project to see happen. Absolutely. All right, Mark. Number two on our top 10 of 2016 list is the new city logo and signs welcome visitors to Oshkosh. Mm -hmm. And this is another really visual one and really interesting. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we were working with the Community Foundation, who have been just an incredible partner on so many things. And this was something that was very near and dear to them with uh, the Taking Root Project uh, beautification. So we were working on a, a, a new logo. Council had asked us to consolidate our logos because our logos had kind of morphed into literally a hundred different variations. So we uh, decided on a new variation with an employee committee and we incorporated it into the signs. And in August, our friends from the Community Foundation joined us for the ribbon cutting. It was right around the time of EAA, so all the people coming for the flying got to see these welcome signs mm -hmm. that at night magically turn uh, awesome. inside out yes. and they, they become well lit in the back. So they're just wonderful welcomes uh, to the city to make people feel welcome. It really uh, promotes tourism and it's also a great community pride thing. Yes, and the partnership, I think, is one of the coolest things about these signs. It's it's not, um, they weren't paid for by this, the taxpayers, which was a, kind of a common misconception. It was a wonderful partnership with the Community Foundation and the city, which will be doing the maintenance and kind of did some of the setup of the electrical. Yeah, we'll, we'll be taking care of those things as we move forward. But yeah, our maintenance folks will be uh, putting plantings there to make them look nice. And our electrical division made sure that all the wires connected so that at night it looked great. So yes. uh, kudos to them and uh, thanks again to the Community Foundation. And uh, it's great that we have these at every single exit along the Highway 41 corridor. That was the goal because that's what about the tourism part. A new person coming into the city, they're, if they're going into town, they're going to see a welcome to Oshkosh sign. Yes, and that I think was another question is a lot of people ask why not at the actual entrances to the city, but these are the main streaming roads that go in. Exactly, and plus we wanted to, we had some issues that we can't necessarily put them on state highways, they had to be on our right of way, and so it took, it wasn't as easy to find the locations, we had to get approvals and make sure we weren't in any state areas, we had to make sure there were no utility conflicts, a lot of details to get it done, but once it got done, uh, the product was so much better and we we're so pleased to, uh, to have this project completed to really welcome people to the city, show it off, make a very positive experience for people that are visiting Oshkosh. Such a feel-good thing and another, like I said, a great example of collaboration between different organizations here in the city. So I think as you move forward, you're going to see I know. more of those, uh, yeah. more collaborations. Not There's one more sign to be done on Jackson Street, but yes. it's more about beautification, whether it's flowers or more bridge lighting mm -hmm. or things like that. You're going to see a lot of that in the coming years. Yes, it's going to be an exciting couple of years. Uh, and that being said, we've got a very exciting number one topic. Uh, I, I'd ask for a drum roll, but I don't think it even needs one. We're going to hit number one here, Mark, and that is the Buckstaff redevelopment remains hopeful. It's kind of a good little cliffhanger for us. Yeah, I'd love to have it resolved, <laughs> but yeah, we're going to have to have a little bit of a cliffhanger, and I'm sorry about that, but it's been an exciting project that at the beginning of the year was really more about, let's just demo the, uh, the Buckstaff site and see if we can get some interest in it. And it's really taken off, of course, uh, you know, everybody uh, has been talking about it because of the possibility of creating an NBA D-League franchise to get awarded here. Mm -hmm. And I know that the local investor group's been working on that actively, uh, but there's still no announcement yet. Uh, but meanwhile, we know what we need to do, so it's demoing the uh, the Buckstaff site. And it's this cool to look back at this video from a couple years ago. Yeah, it you know it's a lot different now. The windows were there uh, before <laughs> they started to get knocked out and everything. Uh, but you know, you, everybody knew that for years this had been a dilapidated site. It really needed to get taken care of, and so we reached settlement with the owners of the property. We put a little bit of blight removal money from our community development block grant program. We got some monies from the bank uh, that was 
uh, part of this, and the demolition started after the asbestos was removed. And uh, even as year end comes, uh, year comes to an end, you can see that uh, one of the the two sites for the property is completely down. So a lot of these prop, a lot of these buildings, you can see that they're down as the snow started to fall, mm -hmm. and we're excited that. Uh, it's down, that portion's down. Now the second uh, land site there will continue to go down throughout the uh, And it was a process. Year. That, that takedown was quite the process, took a while. Well, the, the owner um, gave a contract to somebody who has all the salvage rights. And so if they can salvage uh, some of the cream color brick, which mm -hmm. somebody asked me a question the other day, are you saving the cream color brick? Well, we don't own the cream color brick. Right. The, the contractor does, but I know the contractor's been trying to find uh, a buyer for that. So I like to refer to it as a dismantling as opposed to a demolition yes. because it is taking time while he salvages the value. But we're working on this project to get it demoed uh, so that in the event that the D-League franchise comes up, we have something to show them, which leads is, us into the next exciting part of this one. It is. And this is, you, you may recall us talking about the, uh, uh, the Imagine Oshkosh, and this is the Central City Investment Strategy. So this is the rendering of what it would look like if we were able to get the D-League franchise. Again, this is just a visualization, but the south end would be uh, an arena and a possible second arena if they wanted to go to a bigger site in future years. That's been talked about by that group. I'm not privy to all of that, and a lot of that depends on where it goes in the future. Right. On the north end of South Main Street would be a Class A office complex, really improving that site. Uh, and it's exciting that a lot of the local businesses that have seen this rendering have already been asking questions about, well, what about the west side of Main, South Main Street? Mm -hmm. you know, and they're looking at purchasing properties, making some improvements there, putting in some, uh, some dining and, and bar establishments. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the other big question I get all the time is, what about the Pioneer? And this is the visualization uh, that the planning group developed. Uh, Greater Oshkosh Economic Development Corporation hired a group to do these renderings. So one of them is about the Pioneer and, of course, the marina that goes along with it. But those three, uh, possible arena or entertainment district, uh, Class A office uh, right on the north side, and then on the east side of it uh, is the redevelopment of the Pioneer property. A great three-legged stool that would mean so much to improve the downtown, make it a destination, make it a great uh location of community pride and uh, a lot of fun if we can pull this one yes. off. Yes, well, and it's, it's great to mention too that regardless of what happens, there's big opportunity, there are big things happening here no matter what happens with the Bucks thing too. Yeah, and you're gonna hear the word Sawdust District, that's what this yes. rendering is and that's what we're calling it and a very uh, appropriately named for the Sawdust City, but this is the vision that we have and I've taken a look at some of the other things we've done in recent years and I think we can really prove that we can get these types of things done. People can think about what the Leach property used to look like, what Marion Road used to look like. We are still work to do, but the Leach looks beautiful, the hotel beautiful. That's this so can, true. This can and will look good in the future. So I'm excited about uh, the future. I'm excited about 2017, and we got a lot of uh, pride from what we accomplished in 2016 to move forward with this. Yes. Oh, so many great things in 2016. And Mark, I got to thank you for, for stopping in the studio and going through all of these at the very end of the year. It's always so much fun to take a look back. Uh, and now it's time to delve forward and keep moving. So 2017, here we come. Here and I we can't come. Wa can't wait for it. Yes. So thanks for joining us today, Mark. Thanks. And that's going to do it for this uh, year's top 10 of 2016 episode of City Manager's Report. Thank you very much for joining us. It's great to look back, see what the city has been working so hard on, as well as take a look at forward and look at what's going to be happening in 2017. So make sure you tune in for all of your government programming on GovTV or live online at oshkoshmedia.org. You can listen to live coverage of City Council as well as other meetings on 101.9 WOCT or also online on the OCMS website. Make sure to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter for all of your community and government programming and updates, or check out our YouTube channel for government meeting replays and past episodes of your favorite programs. So as always, thank you so much for joining us on GovTV for the top 10 episode of 2016. Thank you for joining us for all of our episodes of City Manager's Report, and we'll see you in 2017.